The power of magnetism is something that we're all aware of, but very few of us think to question. The most interaction the majority of us have with them is when we attach something to the door of a refrigerator, or if we come into contact with a magnetic lock. The power of magnetism is so much greater than that, though. And so, we're going to take a closer look at it in this video. Whether on their own or as part of something larger, these are the most powerful magnets in the world. 2018 was a time for celebration for scientists at the University of Minnesota in the United States of America. After spending a decade working on the project, they'd come up with a whole new way of scanning the human body. And it had magnetism at its core. The Center for Magnetic Resonance Research within the university had developed a system capable of performing an MRI scan at 10.5 Tesla. 10.5 Tesla is the strongest magnetic field strength ever used in a medical device. By harnessing such a powerful force, the MRI scanner can get a closer look at the inner workings of the human body than ever before. Now the scanner is complete. It's being put straight to work scanning the brains of patients and volunteers. It's hoped that the magnet-driven scanner will be able to provide us with fresh insights into how illnesses such as Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease develop, and what can be done to stop them. Sometimes, scientists will push the limits of an idea just to see how far they can take it. That's why earlier on this year, the world record for the strongest continuous magnetic field was broken at Florida State University within the institution's National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. The magnet they're currently working with is capable of generating a 45.5 Tesla magnetic field, which might just be the next big leap forward when it comes to superconductivity. Sustaining the field is no easy job, though. The copper wire inside the magnet needs more power than a nuclear submarine in order to function and has to be submerged into specially cooled water to prevent it from overheating. That's despite the fact the magnet is no bigger than the average can of beer. At present, it serves no purpose other than impressing scientists. But the technology behind it could be used as a template to create something new. As impressive as the magnet at Florida State University is, it would stop working if you turned it off. Neodymium magnets don't have that problem. They're the world's most powerful permanent magnets. Despite their name, they're not purely made of neodymium. They're actually an alloy and also contain boron and iron, as well as the element they're named after. Their strong magnetic force makes them brittle, so they're coated in metal or plastic for commercial use. One of those commercial uses might happen in your ears every day. Without neodymium magnets, it would be impossible to make in-ear headphones. The average strength of a neodymium magnet is 1.25 Teslas, which is more than enough to hold any magnetic material solidly. It's best not to keep two of them in the same place, though. They can shatter each other if they interact, and trying to hold them apart might break your fingers. One of the ways we'll likely see magnets being used to improve our lives in the near future will be within the field of transport. Many major nations have been working on versions of maglev travel for years, and Japan is well on the way to emerging as a world leader in the field. Maglev stands for magnetic levitation, which is an accurate description of what these high-speed trains do. Thanks to the power of magnets, they float above the track. The rails beneath the trains contain metal electromagnetic coils, and the bottom of the train is covered in superconducting electromagnets. Rubber wheels set the train in motion, but once it's reached 100 miles per hour, the magnets elevate it 4 inches above the ground. That removes all the friction and allows for speeds up to 375 miles per hour. That was the speed achieved by a manned test train in a practice run in 2015. But the final model may prove to be even faster. Let's not just think about transport, though. Let's think about power, too. The Weldenstein 7X might look like a confusing mass of steel and wire, but this is what all power stations of the future might look like. It's a cutting-edge experimental stellarator. So we should probably explain what a stellarator is. First conceived in 1950, stellarators are plasma devices which confine plasma via the use of magnetism. 
if executed correctly, a stellarator could host nuclear fusion reactors in accordance with the principles of magnetic confinement fusion. Weldenstein 7X is as close as humanity has come to that idea so far. It will never produce electricity. It's been built as a test model to prove that the technology is possible. And as of 2019, the tests have been successful. Built in Germany, this might be the template for fusion power plants in the 2020s and beyond. A successful fusion power source would also have positive implications for space travel. As you can tell by now, the science of magnetism is still developing. And the military will always have an interest in developing sciences. When it comes to magnetism, the US military's current project is the development of the railgun. Once the stuff of science fiction, railguns are now a reality. Although they're yet to be attached to warships or used in combat because of their enormous power requirements. Electromagnetic railguns draw on high electrical currents to generate magnetic force and use that force to propel bullets or objects at an enemy. The most powerful model currently in testing is capable of launching non-explosive bullets with a force of Mach 7, accelerating away at over 7,000 feet per second and hitting a target over 200 nautical miles away. At that speed, it doesn't even need to be explosive. It would destroy anything that stood in its way. The test shot, which took place at the Dahlgren Division of the U.S. Naval Warfare Center, produced 7.4 megajoules of energy. Coil guns, sometimes known as gauze guns after Carl Friedrich Gauss, who first envisioned them, are another potential military use of magnetic technology. To put things simply, they use magnets instead of gunpowder. Although they might look like guns or rifles, coil guns are actually projectile accelerators, using coils of electromagnets to launch projectiles at high velocity. They've been available for decades, but they've yet to be adopted by the military because they can't yet produce the same level of firepower as a conventional gun. That doesn't stop hobbyists from building them at home, though. Plans for working coil guns are available on the internet, and YouTube is full of videos from people who've developed them on their own. Now 3D printing is possible. It's likely more will be built, and someone will come up with the advancement that makes them viable military weapons. All the magnets we've looked at so far have been on Earth. So, here's one in space. The Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, more commonly known by the abbreviation AMS, can be found attached to the International Space Station as it orbits around the planet. It's approaching the halfway point of its useful life, but it was a major step forward in attempting to identify the building blocks of the universe when it was first installed in 2011. The AMS, which looks a little like a donut, attempts to measure and assess cosmic rays as they pass by. The bulk of the particles it encounters are plain old protons and electrons, but every now and then it will come across antimatter, which is far more interesting to people back on Earth. There are even some suggestions that it may have identified the presence and effect of the controversial theoretical material known as dark matter as well as anti-helium, but those findings are still subject to confirmation. There are many magnets inside the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory in Florida, USA. But only one of them has its own entry in the Guinness Book of Records. That's the 45 Tesla Hybrid Magnet, which packs the combined force of an 11.5 Tesla superconducting magnet and a 33.5 Tesla resistive magnet. As with anything that involved superconductivity, it has to be kept very cold. That isn't always easy when the magnet is two stories high. That's a catch-22 situation, though. Most of that space is given over to the cooling technology, which keeps things at an icy minus 456 degrees Fahrenheit. The cold is very important. If this sensitive piece of equipment was ever heated up to room temperature, it would take six entire weeks to get it back down to a temperature where it would become operable again. The whole time it's operating, it's sucking down 33 megawatts of power. There are very few hybrid magnets of this kind in the world, and none of which are in such constantly high demand from scientists. Most people are already familiar with the most powerful magnet in the world. They just don't know it's a magnet. 
That honor goes to the Large Hadron Collider, which was the incredibly complicated and enormous piece of equipment responsible for discovering the Higgs boson particle. Is the single largest machine in the world. Building it took 10 years and involved the work and assistance of over 10,000 scientists. Running below the border between France and Switzerland, it's over 500 feet below the ground at its deepest point, and occupies a tunnel 17 miles long. Within that tunnel, a magnetic force is used to smash proton beams together at almost unimaginable force, allowing researchers to look for evidence of new and theorized particles emerging as a result of the collisions. There are over 27 tons of dipole magnets inside the collider, helping to keep the beams moving in a predictable circular pattern. As of the end of 2018, it's been shut down for two years for upgrades and maintenance work, but it will soon be back, smashing things together harder than ever before. If you've been following the Tesla numbers we've discussed so far, you'll have an idea that 100 Tesla would be a phenomenally powerful magnetic force. To be specific, it would be more than 2 million times greater than the magnetic field of planet Earth. That's what makes the 2012 achievement of Los Alamos National Laboratory, who produced a force of 100.75 Teslas without breaking a magnet, all the more impressive. The force may only have lasted 15 milliseconds, but that's still 2,000 times longer than anyone else who's been able to produce a force of that level. Known as the LANL100 Tesla Multishot Magnet, a catch name if ever we heard it, the magnet features a small coil inserted into a larger coil, powered by a motor generator operating at 1200 megawatts. Despite the infinitesimally short period of magnetic force, it still takes a full hour to cool down after producing a pulse. While it's active, scientists can take measurements and observe physical phenomena which have never been studied before. Germany's Bessie facility might have quite a cute name, but it's one of the world's most important scientific research establishments. BESI stands for Berliner Elektronen Speichering Gesellschaft für Synchrotronstrahlung, which in English translates as the Berlin Electron Storage Ring Society for Synchrotron Radiation. As the name confirms, it's a synchrotron, a type of particle accelerator within which particles are accelerated and guided by magnetic fields. When it comes to electromagnetic radiation, BESI provides the European calibration standard. The original facility was built in 1981, but it was replaced by BESI 2 in 1998. The new, improved facility has several different operational modes, offering greater testing facilities to scientists, including the ability to fire electrons through the ring as single entities or in bunches. Right now, it's being used to conduct research into X-ray absorption spectroscopy and protein structures, although researchers are welcome to book themselves some beam time for any reason, so long as those in charge of the facility approve of the purpose. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!